Hi, I'm Erin Seeland for Adafruit, and for today's project, we are making a Festival Finder hat. This hat is made from cardboard and these LED lights that look like little balls, um, and is running on the new Sparkle Motion Stick, which is a really cool little board that just plugs directly into your USB battery. Nice thing about this is you're out at the festival and you're running around and you have a USB battery, so you can charge your phone or any other LED accessories that you've built from some of the cool Adafruit tutorials that we've posted. Here I am. This project is a pretty easy build, but I had kind of a hard time with it. Originally, I really wanted the arrow to just be floating above my head on a headband so that it could be seen from both sides and uh, kind of look like an emoji or notification on your phone so that when you looked at it to see a people, there would be almost like an augmented reality arrow pointing right at me so you could pick me out of the crowd. Um, I tried multiple times to get this to work. The headbands just were not strong enough or wide enough or it had correctly weighted in order to get the arrow to stand point up on the top of my head. Um, I'd love to see in the comments if you managed to make it work. Please let me know how you did it. Inside, it's all running on WLED. WLED is a really cool open source LED control app that you can use with any smartphone and it works over Wi-Fi, it even works without Wi-Fi. Uh, and you can control the lights with your phone from anywhere. It's really quick to install and easy to use and I'll show you how to get it set up. Plug the Sparkle Motion Stick into your computer's USB port. Click Install and select the serial port. On my Mac, it's the one that has a WCH there near the end. If you don't see this as an option, you might need to install a driver first. Check the Sparkle Motion Guide on the Adafruit Learning System for the download link. Click Install, and it takes a couple minutes. Once it's done, open your Wi-Fi settings and look for a new network called WLEDAP. There it is. Connect to that network and you'll get a pop-up window that gives you the option to set up your Wi-Fi credentials. Go ahead and enter them here. Scroll down a bit and you'll see a box where you can enter your name for your project. This is what you'll type into your web browser when you want to connect and control your lights. If you have more than one LED project on your Wi-Fi, it's also a good idea to give your project a unique access point mode name and you can do that right here. Click Save and uh, head to your web browser. Type in the name you gave your project and, oh, first you have to connect to your Wi-Fi network. So go ahead and do that. And then once you're back on the regular Wi-Fi network you just entered, the uh, command center will pop right up. Click the Config tab and then choose LED Preferences. This is where we're going to tell WLED about our light setup. There are 20 lights in my strand, so I'm going to change this number here to 20. And the Sparkle Motion Board has GPIO pins set up for us on pins 21 and 22. So I'm going to use 21, so that's the number I'll enter right here. And that is all we need to do to get our lights up and running for the moment. So let's get the lights connected to the board and see if it's all working. The board plugs directly into the USB battery, which is super cool. Then we'll add a long ribbon cable coming out of the board and so the battery in the board can live in your pocket while the arrow is on your head. Next, we'll add a JST connector so that you can unplug the two of them from each other. There is already a JST connector on the out end of your strand, which we can use to plug the ribbon cable in. Uh, cut it off and strip the wires on the ribbon cable and then connect the connector with your soldering iron. If you don't know how to do this, we do have videos on the learning system that shows you what to do. One of the wires on this ribbon cable has a stripe on it, so uh, in my projects I always make sure to line up the stripey wire with the red wire or the power wire on my connector. So um, now I know which one goes where. So that stripey wire is going to go into the plus 5 volt hole. And then the middle wire goes into the um, the 21 hole, and then that remaining wire will go into ground. And if all goes well, when you plug in your lights, they will come on. 
and mine are not coming on. So the problem that I ran into here is that I got the wrong end. Um, these lights are directional, so the in end and the out end are not interchangeable. You have to plug into the in end, and it looks like I accidentally plugged into the out end. So what I'm doing here is cutting the connector off the out end and soldering it back onto the in end, making sure I get the wires in the correct orientation. And now when I plug in my light strand, the lights come on. This is really important, and it's really hard to tell which is in and which is out. Uh, so this just happens a lot of the time. Um, and just for reference for you, uh, it looks like the male connector was the one that was originally connected to the in end. So had I cut off the female connector and uh, followed the guide that way, I would have got it right the first try. I designed the template in Tinkercad, so it can be easily downloaded for laser cutting or 3D printing. But my 3D printer was broken, so I just printed out the template on a piece of paper and made it out of a piece of 8th inch poster board. I used a bandsaw to cut it out, um, both layers, and then used a drill press with a 5 8 inch bit uh, in order to drill the holes. I had to clean off the bit every single time it got a little gummed up um, and made sure I had a spoil board that I was drilling into so the back of the holes looked nice. Painted the whole thing sparkly red and then it was time to add the lights. Now these lights are kind of directional. You can tell which is the front and the back. So I didn't want to just put them in there willy-nilly. I wanted to make sure that they had kind of a little bit of cable management and a little bit of evenness in terms of distribution. So I use these teeny tiny little rubber bands. Um, I got these at the dollar store uh, just for um, holding the wires in place and that worked out really well. I used hot glue to secure all the lights to the arrow. And as you can see here, originally I was uh, attempting to do it over one of these halo headbands to try and get the arrow to stand up on my head all by itself. And as you saw earlier, that did not really work out. <laughs> but the hot glue and uh, cardboard combination seemed to work really well um, and kept all the wires managed and as light as possible. Uh, make sure you get the connector kind of coming out the bottom so uh, you can reach it into the wire and plug it into the battery. And finally, I attached it to my top hat using a fancy costume shop elastic band. And then on the inside, just kind of taped the battery and the sparkle motion board to the inside of the top of the top hat for the evening, which, uh, you know, maybe wasn't the cleanest solution, but it worked great. And it didn't damage my hat in any way. One thing you might notice when you first start up your lights is that the colors don't seem to be matching up. You can click on the yellow or red, and the lights don't come out yellow or red. They come out some other color. This is really fixable. Um, it's that our light strand is not a standard color order, so uh, there's a real quick setting that we can change in order to fix that. Head to the Config tab and LED Preferences and scroll down to where you set up your strip. And then right here under Color Order, change it to uh, RGB instead. And then you should get colors that match reality. Let's go ahead and make our first preset. Right now I've had on solid color and you can see when I click the button of the color, it'll change the color of the lights. That's pretty straightforward but it's a lot more fun to start to use some of these animations. For this uh, project, I really like the chase animation. Um, and we can go in here and customize it, uh, changing the color of the lights. You can change the color of the background as well. And add a second color of chase. Uh, there's a lot of options here. You can also change the speed and the width down here. Uh, so play around with it until you find something you really like and then we can save it over here as a preset. I can do this for hours, guys. Once you're happy with what you have, go on over the presets column and click a new preset. You can give it a name, we'll say red and white, and then click save. Now there's another option down here. 
uh, that says apply at boot. So this is something that's interesting to know about. If this box is checked, then this is the animation that's going to start up first when I turn my project on. You can make a million animations and then you can save them all into a playlist. The playlist option is really cool. Um, you can set the duration of each effect and the transition. You could shuffle them um, and uh, just add as many effects as you can. And you have a whole playlist that'll play automatically all night without you having to mess with it. And last, I'm gonna show you how to make this project sound reactive. In order to make it sound reactive, the first thing we need is to go to the Sparkle Motion Guide and take a look at the pinouts. So the pinouts page here in the Sparkle Motion Guide will tell us everything that we need to know about where everything is laid out. We're looking for the microphone. And, oh, there it is. We have an I2S microphone. Uh, and these are the pins that it is on. We have WS on GPIO 12, data's on 13, and ELCK is on 14. So if we can come over here back to WLED and go to config. And then under user mods, scroll down a little bit, there's an audio reactive section. So enable it, and I like to add palettes too. So we're gonna make this match what the pinout says. It looks like we have 12, 13, and 14, and uh, WS is 12, data is 13, and clock is 14. So I've set those all up. Now this sometimes requires a reboot of the of the board in order to get it to work, but I'm gonna click save. And then when I come back over here, I have some animations that have little music notes next to them. I'm going to reboot this just to make sure that I am getting all those settings taken care of. But now, when I go to one of these effects that have a music note on it, then you can see the music reactivity is working. I really hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, if you make one, let me know in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. You can see the full build tutorial written out at learn.adafruit.com with downloads and everything you need. And uh, remember to subscribe if you like this video. Thanks so much and have a fantastic day.